ready for the word? Are you ready for the word? Thank you, bro. Thank you. Man, I'm excited to preach the word. Uh, I'm going to be in Mark 4, verses 35 through 41. Look to your neighbor and say, get ready. Get ready. You can turn on your Bibles and go to Mark 4, or you can flip there. If you're there, say, I'm there. If you need more time, say, wait up. Wait up. Mark 4, verses 35 through 41. It's going to be on the screen if you don't have your Bibles. It says, as evening came... Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus into the boat and started out, leaving the crowd behind, although other boats followed. But soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat and it began to be filled with water. It began to be filled with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. What a weird verse. Like the storm is going crazy and Jesus is still snoozing. You know what I'm saying? Does anybody know any deep sleepers? Uh, I'm an, I'm an incredibly deep sleeper. Like if, if somebody came and tried to rob my house, I would sleep right through it. Like I don't own a gun. My wife does. Uh, I'm scared of guns and, uh, and my wife has a gun over near. And, uh, so, um, and so, if the robber comes to our house, uh, my wife has it. You know what I'm saying? Like she's gonna she's gonna make sure that we're safe because I am a deep sleeper, and it seems like Jesus was a deep sleeper. He was sleeping through the storm, uh, and the waters was breaking through, and Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on the cushion. The disciples woke him up, shouting, "Teacher, don't you care that we are going to drown?" Verse thirty nine. When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the winds and said to the waves, silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked each other, who is this man? Even the winds and the waves obey him. The title of this message is The Journey to Purpose. Let's pray one more time. Lord, we're lo- we love you. We're so grateful for everything that you're gonna do tonight. Lord, I pray for the Dallas Mavericks as they go and play the Clippers or that they completely destroy them. Uh, we put them into your hands and we put tonight into your hands in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Um, in 1999, I was a wee old boy and my family and I traveled from California to Florida. And I thought this was going to be the most incredible family trip in my entire life. I thought this was going to be amazing. The junk food, music, quality time with family in Disney World. What else can a little boy ask for? I thought I was going to have an incredible time. Little did I know that this was almost the last trip that I would ever go on in my entire life. Because on this trip, I almost died. Um, I was traveling and as we were making our way through Texas, this was my first time in Texas. I'm a California boy. This was my first time and I didn't know about Texas storms. Like Texas storms are something else. In California, we didn't have tornadoes. We had earthquakes. You would just like jiggle for a little bit, you know what I'm saying? And and then you're good. Uh, I didn't know about Texas storms. And so we're driving through Texas and in the distance, I see beautiful clouds. They're big, they're mighty. I see lightning, the lightning's beautiful. I see, I, I, I hear the thunder, it's incredible. And it was beautiful in the distance. But as we start driving through the storm, my life was about to end. I felt the wind blowing. I saw the lightning striking and me and my entire family, we were screaming. Like, like this was a terrifying time. And by the end of the storm, me and my entire family, we were cuddled up in the front seat, holding on for dear life because we thought we were gonna die in this Texas storm. Have you ever been in a storm before? You know, storms, what they will do is it will, it will take our eyes off of where we are going. Because for me, I didn't care about Disneyland. I didn't care about another bed I was going to sleep in. All I cared about was surviving that day. And 
And storms, what they will do is they will take our eyes off of where we're going. And these disciples, they were on their way to the other side of the lake. And then they found themselves in the middle of the storm. It says the disciples woke him up and shouted, teacher, don't you care that we're about to drown? So in the midst of this storm, they were afraid. Have you ever been in a storm before? We, we all go through storms. And, you know, sometimes we go through natural storms. But if we're honest, there's times as Christians that we can go through storms of life. We can go through our parents getting a divorce. We can go through bullying. We can go through weight that is from darkness. We can, we can go through anxiety and depression. We can go through storms in our lives. And depending on how we handle that storm will determine if we get to the other side or not. Because what storms will do is it will take our eyes off of where we're going and it will put it on what we are currently going through. So when you're going through a storm, Instead of looking at what God has for you, you're looking at your brokenness. Instead of looking at how God wants to use you, you're looking at your anxiety. Instead of looking at the things that God wants to take you to, you're looking at the storm you're going through. Has anybody ever been through a storm before? We all go through storms. And before this storm, what we see is we find Jesus and he says this. He says, let's cross to the other side of the storm. Notice what Jesus did not say. He didn't say, let's cross and be taken out by the storm. He didn't say, let's cross and turn around whenever things get hard. He didn't say, let's cross and whenever we want to give up, we'll just drown. No, he said, let's cross and make our way over to the other side. So what does this mean? This means that Jesus already knew that they were going to make it to the other side. This, this means that he already had the end result in mind that no matter the storm that these disciples were going to go through, that the plan was for them to go to the other side. And I'm going to let you you know, and I'm going to encourage you, you may be going through a storm right now. You may have been attacked. You may have been weighed down by, by the, the, by the rains of this world, but I'm going to let you know, Jesus is with you and he has plans for you not to die in the storm, but to make it to the other side. Jesus has a plan for you and we can't allow the storm to weigh us down and get our eyes off of where Jesus is taking us. We will make it to the other side. And on the other side of this lake, it represents purpose. Because on the other side of this lake, we find a few different people in the Bible in chapter five of uh, Mark chapter five. We find as soon as this boat makes it to the other side, Jesus and the disciples, they encounter a man who is filled with a legion of demons. This man would make his home in tombs where dead people would sleep and the entire town was afraid of him. And this man was in need of deliverance. This man was in need of a touch from Jesus, the power of Jesus. Also on the other side of this lake, we find the woman with the issue of blood. This woman for 12 years tried to get set free, tried to get healed. She would go to doctors. She would spend all of her money. She did everything so that she can get healed and nothing was working. We also find a man named Jairus and Jairus had a daughter that was 12 years old that was on her deathbed. And on the other side of this lake, we find someone who needs deliverance. We find someone who needs healing and we find somebody who needs to be raised from the dead. And so if the disciples would have been taken out by the storm, if Jesus would have been taken out by the storm, they would have missed out on God being able to use them to set those people free. And I'm going to let you know that we are all called by God and that there is something on the other side of the storm. And what we have to be careful of is we can't allow the storm to take us out because there is something and someone on the other side of your storm that needs healing, that needs breakthrough, that needs deliverance, that needs the power of God. And what we do sometimes is we get in the midst of the storm and we give up too soon. And when we give up, we give up on the call and the purpose that God has for us. And we, th this is, this is crazy because God has called us all, but not everybody steps into the purpose that God has for them. 
There have been people who have been called by God and have not stepped into the purpose that God has for them. But we have the opportunity not to just be called by God or have the purpose of God, but to actually step in to the purpose of God. But it's, it's a journey to step into that, that purpose. And you know, the enemy will do anything and everything to stop you from stepping into your purpose. He will send rain. He will send tornadoes. He will send trials. He will send tribulation. He will send weight and he will send all types of things. And the enemy does not want you to step in to your purpose. In John 10, 10, it says the thief, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. The thief does not want you to step into your purpose. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy it. In 1 Peter 5, 8, it says, stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. Watch out for him. Your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. The enemy is does not want you to step into the purpose. The enemy wants to destroy your purpose. The enemy wants to destroy your mindset. The enemy wants to destroy your confidence. The enemy wants to weigh down on your life to stop you from stepping in to what God has for you. The enemy is afraid of you stepping into your purpose. And being attacked is a sign that the enemy is trying to keep us from our purpose. And sometimes we go through hard things and we're like, God doesn't love me. God doesn't hear my prayers. God hates me. I'm going through this. I have bad luck. And I, I was born into this horrible family and this horrible situation. And I am just not seen by God. But the opposite is true. The enemy has come after your life because you are a threat to the enemy. And God wants to use you in a great way. And the enemy wants you to believe that you can't be used by God because... You're a threat to him. Actually, you being attacked by the enemy is a sign that you are called by God. And you shouldn't run away from being attacked by the enemy because we are actually called by him. And it's a sign that we have been called by him. Why would the enemy attack you if you're not a threat to him? Why would the enemy bring stuff at you if you're not a threat to him? The enemy brings stuff to people and humanity because he's afraid of us, because there's power in our voice. There's power in our faith. There's power in our walk. And if we can step into the things that God has for us, we will see the enemy flee. And we are all being attacked. We are all being in storms and in trial. But here's my question for you. When you're attacked, Will you fight back or will you fall back? Stepping into your purpose and when you're attacked, are you going to fight back or are you going to fall back? Because many Christians give up when times get hard. Many Christians give up on their family or on their school or revival when attack comes. But are you going to fight back or are you going to fall back? Are you going to fight back against the enemy or are you going to fall back against the enemy? Are you going to believe for revival or are you going to sit back and watch everything fall into hell? Are you going to lean into people being set free or are you going to lean back and watch everybody be broken? Are you going to fight back? Or are you going to fall back? Because if we're going to step into our purpose, it's going to be a fight. Who told you Christianity was easy? Who told you that everything was going to be easy and nice and fun? No, Christianity is a fight. And if we are going to step into our purpose, it's going to be a fight. And we're going to learn from how Jesus handled the storm on how we can step into our purpose. In verse 36, it says, so they took Jesus into the boat and started out, leaving the crowd behind. So to get to purpose, here's number one, everything can't come with us. Everything can't come with us. I love camping and, uh, and I love hiking. Actually, I don't know why I said I love camping. I hate camping. Uh, but I do like hiking. I like going on trails and being in the mountain and being in nature. It's awesome. Uh, there was a time that I was going on a hike and I brought a lot of stuff with me. I brought extra layers of clothes. I brought my backpack. I, I brought a water bottle. I brought everything that you don't need on a hike. I just, I just brought, I was over prepared. And this mic was, a, this hike was about three miles long. It was incredibly long and I had 
had a lot of stuff on me. And so as I go on this hike, because I had all of this stuff, I started to get exhausted. I was weighed down. I didn't bring my inhaler. Uh, I didn't have uh, the energy to continue on. And so instead of finishing the trail, I turned back around because I was exhausted because I brought everything with me. And as Christians, there's times that we try to step into the things that God has for us, but we're still trying to hold on to everything from our past. We're, we're wanting to step into our purpose, but we're still trying to bring that addiction. We're, we're trying to step into our call that God has for us, but we're still holding on to those toxic friends that are talking about everyone and they're, they're bringing you down and showing you images and, and, cut, and, and breaking you apart. And we're trying to step into the thing that God has for us, but we're still trying to bring everything with us. But can I let you know, if you're gonna walk into the call, into the purpose that God has for you, you can't bring everyone with you and you can't bring everything with you. You can't bring that pill. You can't bring that marijuana. You can't bring those drugs. You can't bring that addiction. You can't bring that person. You can't bring those people because God wants you to step into something and the things that you're holding on to is weighing you down. Many Christians miss purpose because they are busy holding on to everything that you need to leave, leave behind. Not everything and everyone can come with you to the place God has called you to. Not everything can come with you. So what do you need to leave back on the shore? What do you need to leave back? What, what person, what people, what relationship, what mindset, what music, hello, what entertainment, hello. Not everything that you are having to leave behind is bad, but not everything is benef beneficial. So we have to be careful the things that we bring with us. In Isaiah 43, verse 18 through 19, it says, but forget all that. Somebody say, forget that. Forgetting all that, it is nothing compared to what I am going to do for you. For I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun it. Do you not see it? So sometimes we don't let go of something because we feel like we're going to lose out on what God had for us. But I'm going to let you know that not everything that God has blessed us with in the past is going to get us to the thing that God wants to do in us in the future. So because you maybe were blessed with friends in one season, maybe they've walked away from God and you're still trying to hold on to them. Maybe God has tried to do something in your mind and in your heart, and you have to let go of some things that are holding you back. And we got to forget it. We have to let it go. Many Christians don't experience the new thing because they are still holding on to the old thing. What are you still holding on to? What are you still holding on to? And we can't continue to hold on to what we have been holding on to. And to get to purpose, here's number two. It won't be easy. In verse 37, it says, but soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat and it began to be filled with water. So these guys are Christians, but they're going through a hard time. These guys are Christians, they're with Jesus, but they're going through a season that was difficult. So if we're gonna step into purpose, sometimes we go through difficult seasons. Are you encouraged in church today? <laughs> sometimes we will commit to Jesus and then we will experience our life getting worse. Come on, can I, be, can I be honest today? Sometimes you claim Jesus and then those friends leave you. Sometimes you say yes to Jesus and then all of the things fall apart because Christianity isn't always easy. In John 16, 33, it says, in this world, you will have trouble. So Jesus didn't say everything is going to be easy. Everything is going to be nice. Everything's going to be comfortable. Jesus actually said, in this world, you will have trouble. Did you know that trouble is in this world? So, there's times where we'll look at the world and it's, they're, they're going to hell and they're all of the, all of the things that they're doing and it's falling apart. And we will see the world and be like, man, they're so broken. But did you know that Jesus said that this world will have trouble? that this world is broken, that this world is falling. And, and, and the enemy would love for you 
to think that your life should be comfortable because if you stay in the comfortable place, then you're never gonna be a threat to the enemy. But as soon as you step into uncomfortable environments and where things aren't easy and things aren't coming natural to you is the very moment and the opportunity that God will want to use you. That, that your life isn't always going to be easy. That, that accepting Jesus isn't always going to be easy. Actually, in, in the, the early church, they were rejected. They were, they were beaten. They were thrown into prison. They were beheaded and they still said yes to Jesus. And new age Christians will run away at one side of somebody talking bad about you because now you hold your Bible in class. And this world and this life is not easy. But can I let you know the rest of this verse? It says, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So because you're connected to Jesus, you have power over darkness, over pain, over addiction. And even though storms may come at you, that you have the ability to have victory and to overcome the storm. When, when you sign up for war, you need to expect a fight. When you sign up to be in war, you're not just saying, I'm going to just have a good old time and smile. And No, when you sign up for war, you're signing up for a fight. And I'm going to let you know, when you signed up for Christianity, you signed up for a fight. There's a warrior inside of you. There's a fighter inside of you. There's somebody that's going to overcome inside of you. There's somebody that has confidence and strength that's inside of you. And you have to not just say, oh, this is going to be easy. No, you have to lean into the fight. There's a fighter inside of you. And your fight isn't just for you. Your fight is for somebody else because your fight, your victory is going to set somebody else free. Christianity isn't always easy. And I'm going to ask the keys to come up. We are on the winning side. And the enemy may, wants you to think that he has so much power over your life. The enemy wants you to think that this storm is going to last forever. The enemy wants you to believe that the weight and the fear and the anxiety is going to be what defines you, but you are on the winning side. In verse 39 of this text today, it says, when Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and he said to the waves, silence, be still. And then watch this. It says, suddenly the wind stopped. Suddenly. Somebody say Suddenly. I said, say suddenly. suddenly. Says suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. So watch this in verse 39. It says, he rebuked the wind and he said to the waves, stop. So to get to purpose is going to happen by us rebuking the enemy, rebuking the enemy. And I'm about to end and we're about to party tonight. God is about to move in a powerful way. And... <coughs> Sorry. Um, wow. Um, Jesus spoke to the winds and he spoke to the waves. So what I found about Christianity and what I see all the time is that we like to talk about the storm. So we talk about the anxiety. We talk about the depression. We talk about the hard times. We talk about the storm. We talk about the turbulence. We talk about how it's difficult. And this is what the disciples were doing. They were observing, look at how bad it is. We're going to die. The disciples were very good at diagnosing the problem. Look at how bad it is. Look at how hard it is. And Christians do the same thing. We will look at something. We will diagnose it. We will say, this will end in death. This will end dark. This will end bad. And we have become good at talking about the darkness, or talking about the storm, but Jesus didn't talk about the storm. <coughs> he rebuked the storm. He didn't just talk about the storm. He didn't talk about the winds. He rebuked the wind. And I find Christians only talking about the enemy, but we, if we're gonna step into the purpose that God has for us, we need to rebuke the enemy. We need to define what has come after us. And we need to say, anxiety, 
I rebuke you, be silent. We need to say depression, I rebuke you, be silent. We need to say schools that are going to hell, I rebuke you, be silent. We need to say to the world that you have come after us way too often and way too much, I rebuke you, be silent. We can't just look and diagnose the problem. We need to speak to the problem. When Jesus spoke, the enemy fled. When Jesus spoke to the storm and he spoke to the wind, it said that peace came. And I'm going to let you know when you stop talking about your problem and you start speaking to the problem, watch what happens with your storm. Watch what happens when you stop just diagnosing your problem and you start speaking to the problem. And it was incredible because the storm went silent. There was no more attack. There was no more danger. And this is incredible because the disciples and Jesus, remember, they were called to go to the other side. The other side was a place of purpose. The storm was the attack, but the other side was purpose. So by them leaving things behind and by them rebuking the enemy and by them going through this hard time and not quitting whenever they did, they ended up getting to the other side. In Mark 5.1, it says, so they arrived at the other side of the lake in the region of Gethsemane. So Mark 5, it says that they arrived at the other side. So they didn't stay in the storm. They didn't stay in the place of attack, that they actually arrived at the other side. And I believe that there's some of you where you have believed that you would never arrive, that you're not gonna be able to be used by God, that you're not gonna be able to step into the calling, that you're not gonna have the peace and you're not gonna have the freedom, that you're not gonna have the power. And I believe that there's some of you who've believed that. And watch this, when they step to the other side, Remember that man that was filled with a legion of demons? He was delivered. Remember the, the woman who had the issue of blood for 12 years? She was healed. Remember the daughter that was dead on the bed that needed a resurrection? She was brought back to life. And because they got to the other side, they were used by God. And watch this. When you get to the other side, watch how God uses you. Watch how God uses you to set your friends free, to set your parents free, to step into your school and to see revival come out. Watch what happens when you don't stay in the storm, but when you step in to your purpose. There is a journey to that purpose and it's gonna take us not just allowing the enemy to attack us, 